Hey, this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm so excited because we have a very special guest. She's been on our show previously and people just love her. They wanted her back. So we have her back today. And she is Natasha Venter. She is a spiritual, intuitive spiritual counselor. But before we begin, I just want to give her a quick shout out to our sponsor today. And it's DMAWorld.com. They are a marketing consultant agency who helps small businesses grow into big businesses. They don't want you to get scammed by those big marketing companies. So they'd like you to visit DMAWorld.com where they help you grow into the businesses that you are meant to become. So check them out at dmaworld.com. And back to my girl, Natasha, our intu intu intuitive spiritual counselor. <laughs> I know, language is so Language important. is so important. And yeah, you know, it is important, so much important. <laughs> now, I know you wanted to talk about grief today, but before we begin, just tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. And then, you know, we'll go right into that topic because I think it's such an important topic. And so many people, you know, grieve, you know, about so many oh, different things. And it's something that needs to be talked about. And your advice and your experience is so valued on this show. So I would just want to hear what you have to say. So go ahead, take it away, Natasha. Well, thank you so much. I am Natasha Venter. I, you can reach me at angelicclarifications.com. I am one who really, I've used my intuitiveness. I've been intuitive my whole life. I remember being born. I remember going through a lot of these dances of, of my spirit, my soul, being so alive. And when I became aware of those knowings and those um, obser observations of life, I really stepped into how can I negotiate the world around me with a little bit more enlightenment Yeah, and going through that. So everything that I walked through, even when I was a kid, there was a part of me that said, why is, it, why is this in my life? Yeah. Why am I going through this? Where am I at? And so it made my life more proactive, even though I was a victim of being bullied. I was a victim of, um, of being dyslexic. And so people thought I was more stupid, you know, it, being all these things that, that being shy and quiet, you know, people can't believe I was shy and quiet. <laughs> my husband though, and this is where I love to talk. And it's not that grief is a loving conversation, right? But but I love to support people going through these moments in life because of the fact that when my parents passed away and I was having kids at the same time and losing my my um, home, my family homes, and there was just so much grief I was going through at one time. And then I work with Azarel, Archangel Azarel, who's the ultimate timekeeper. Yeah. And so like he said one day, he says, Natasha, have you seen the other side of death, haven't you? And I said, Yes. I have. And that's where I want people to understand that, that when we're going through things and going through life, that, you know, when we go into witness mode and we understand things, and I love to bring that into people, people have sessions with me and they go, Natasha, I don't know how you bring my whole life into one. This is why it's happening for me. Yeah. And, and I love to do that because then they, then they stop scratching their head and they go, Oh, I'm inspired now. And I love to bring inspiration in the midst of darkness because right now in our world, we are going through so much, yeah. so much. And I do not want to label what that so much is because that means that I'm bringing language into your world. And, and that's one thing that I always do is your truth is your truth. I'm just here to bring a perspective and an understanding. Right. Yes. And hopefully that enlightens you kind of like I always say, like updating a computer or updating your phone, you know, you don't have to have to get a new computer, but you need to update things. Right. And so yes. we're updating a lot in our world, which means a lot of things are falling away. Yeah. That is the unknown grief that people don't always look at. Right. And, and how do we negotiate through that grief? And like earlier, we were talking about relationships. Yeah. You know, how people are struggling, not having a relationship. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. There's so much grief around that. Yeah. So much grief around that. So thank you, Stacey, for letting me be on here. I'm just so excited to be with you. We always 
find enlightenment when we come together. <laughs> oh, we do. There is a connection. We just we just connect so well every time you come on the show. I feel like, you know, I, I feel like with COVID, so many things have changed ever since COVID came. Life has changed. The way we we do things have changed and people have changed. And, you know, even relationships has changed, you know. You know, there for me, you know, I lost three people that I loved during COVID. And it was really hard because I was their caretakers. So it was it was really devastating. And then when relationships, you hear people all the time, they were stuck in the house with their partner and it got very frustrating. One, they didn't, nobody likes to be confined, you know, and feel in prison no. in their own home. And being with somebody, as much as you love them, you know, you don't want them over your shoulder 24 seven, you know, everybody needs space. Everyone needs time to renew. Everyone needs to focus on what they like to do and, and they need to get out of the house. So it was a very stressful time. And mm -hmm. there was a lot of grieving going on for many different reasons. And let us, you know, talk about, you know, the grieving process and talk about like, you know, how common it is in today's society and maybe give us later on some tips on how we could start to overcome the grieving process because people struggle every day. They feel depressed. Mm -hmm. They feel stuck in a hole and they're just grieving and they just don't know how to get out of that hole. And maybe today you can give us some really insightful information on how to get out of that hole. Okay. So I want people to understand though, that the hole and that, um, that rabbit hole that yes. we go down in grief is one of the stages. Yes. It is one of the stages. And in that rabbit hole, we're going to have uh, anger, frustration, um, sadness, um, why, the yes. whys, um, how comes, you know, whatever question you can have. And then, you know, I want to add in people forget about their bodies. They and do. so, you know, we go into where we eat a bunch of sugar or we eat a bunch of greasy food and then our body starts and then our adrenals start and then we get into fear and flight and then we get into reaction and then we get yes. in. Do you feel the cycle? I mean, the circling and did yes. you notice how it's speeding up? But grief makes us slow down. It does. We don't want to get out of bed. Right. We don't want to do. We don't want to do. We don't want to do. Yes. And that's what I, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things I tell people, you got to do things in spite of it. Yes. You got to do things in spite of it. You know, even if you don't want to get up out of bed, you get out of bed and you make yourself some coffee or tea. Yes. And then something to eat nice, you mm -hmm. know, like going, oh, I said, you don't even have to get dressed. Right. Just get up out of bed and get something. Yes. Next morning, get up out of bed, brush your hair. Right. Do things in spite of it. Yeah. And, it, you know, I would say that when we can do that, life gets a little bit more, you, you start, it's kind of like getting a muscle yeah. that you don't use forever. Like if yes. you're in a business that, that you have to sit down a lot and then you try to get up and run five miles, you can't do that. No, you can't do you that. You have to get up and at least start walking around the building, right? Yes. And so that's the same metaphor for, for life when you're in grief and and going back to going back a little bit in this conversation that, you know, I consider that, you know, a lot of us during COVID, going back to COVID, our restaurants closed down that we love so much. Mm -hmm. You know, we we couldn't spend time with the people that we so wanted to be around. Yeah. Right. We um we couldn't um we couldn't breathe fresh air. Yeah. We couldn't breathe fresh air because we were so mandated to wear masks in some states, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so there was just a stifling feeling. And that's yeah. a form of grief is stifle. We're stifled. We can't move forward. We don't know where to go. We don't know what to do. And, you know, I understand that a lot of people lost even jobs. Yeah. You know, we lost connections. Um, we, we, we found out that a lot of us were introverts, not extroverts. Right. But I can say that a lot of us turned into introverts, even though we were on the edge of it. Yeah. We turned more into it because it was easier to stay home. Right. It's easier not to do. Mm -hmm. We found out after we had to start getting out, which is another grief part, right? Yeah. That we, we turned into, oh, I didn't realize that I didn't want to do all that stuff. 
Right. Where again, if you want to go somewhere in life, you have to do things in spite of it. Yeah. And that's one thing, you know, if I can jump forward into this moment of the show, right? Yeah. Grief is the thing that, that, um, that chews us up, spits us out and turns us into somebody who we're meant to be. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it chews us up, spits us out into life and helps us to be who we're meant to be. Cause I can tell you that I'm not the same woman when I went through grief. Yes. My husband even says I'm not married. I didn't marry. I'm not married to the same woman. Yes. I was shy and quiet. Wouldn't want to walk into a building. Talk about an introvert. Mm -hmm. Right. And now I can stand in front of a hundred people and talk and not be afraid. Right. Because grief is the thing that said, Natasha, it's time for you to be you. Yes. Took off those layers of insecurities. Take Took off those layers because I asked what grief was meant to do for me. Right. If you do that. Sit with grief just a little bit like a friend. And really negotiate those feelings you're having mm -hmm. and be vulnerable with them. Right. I'm going to tell you that those feelings and those emotions and that vulnerability is going to be one of your greatest strengths. Yeah. And I don't care if it's grief around losing your job, not having a partner, all those kinds of things that, you know, when you can sit with those emotions, give them a moment. Yes. Not a year. Right. But a moment. Yeah. Not a month, but a moment. Right. Give them a night. Yes. But not the whole day. Right. Give them a chance to speak up. Find out who you are. Because yes. I can tell you, grief is the thing that 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 polishes us off. Polishes yes. us off. It will give you everything you needed to become your better self. Right. It will teach you that whatever you were told as a child. Is yeah. it true? Right. Or is true? Or you have to define it a little bit differently, right? Yes. There again, the updates. The updates. So, you know, grief is, I can tell you that whenever I see somebody going through grief, I don't necessarily tell them hallelujah, but inside of me, I'm telling them, how, I'm saying hallelujah. Yeah. This is how I can, I can help you negotiate through it a little bit. Now there's different layers of grief. Mm-hmm. There's the different layers of grief. So there's the grief that you have if you can't go to the same restaurant you've wanted to, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And then there's the grief when you um, when you lose something that is close to you. Let's say a job that you've been at for a while, and you right. and all of a sudden you the building the 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 business closes down, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's that grief, and then you have the grief of let's say a relationship. Yes. And then you have the grief of, of let's say, and, and there's much more in between, but then you have the grief of like losing family members. Right. And, and, and I would include animals in that family members. Mm -hmm. And oh, then sure. you have the grief of losing a child. Mm -hmm. And when you're in that moment that, and I would include even partnerships of 50 years. Right. 30 to 50 years can be in losing that child mm -hmm. if it's an automatic passing of somebody. Yeah. And so with that, that the, there's different layers of grief. Yeah. Grief is all the same thing. It yeah. triggers emotions, but it depends on what it's labeled, depends on how deep that rabbit hole can be. Yeah. So... Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to life right yeah exactly but you know i i've learned over the years too i feel like out of every negative thing that happens to us or any type of grief i have had a positive thing come out of it where i have learned from it it has made me stronger as person and yep. it's also made me look at life in, in a different sense and it's also helped me become closer to, um, a, you know, certain, like in certain situations, you know, even after the passing of somebody that I loved, I felt even closer after they left because I spiritually stayed connected with them mm -hmm. and I didn't let go. And I focused on the positive things that, that came from that relationship. I didn't focus on the negative that they're gone you know, physically in our mm -hmm. world, 
you know, because I personally believe spiritually, they're always with us, you know, yes. their body disintegrates, but their, 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 their spiritual being is always alive. And it's always with us. And when we call them, they're here. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I've even felt a closer relationship because I focused on all the positive memories. Mm -hmm. And then I would take time sometimes when they would just pop in my head out of nowhere. And I would just talk to them, you know, in a quiet room by myself. And it felt like a connection and I could feel the emotion and I could feel some type of connection going on. And, and then I thought about all the things I've learned, you know, throughout that grieving process and it actually made me a better person overall. And, and it actually felt close to that person because now, you know, you have gratitude and you really honor that relationship that you've mm -hmm. had with that person, you know, and the fact in my mind that I feel they're always with us. They never left. We just spiritually, we, you know, physically, we can't touch them. We can't know. hear them. We can't touch them. We don't, we can't hug them. We can't interact with them and that's what, as or even beings. argue with them yeah. some of us grieve that we can't have arguments with this person that we always argued with so yeah. relationships are a stretch and a pull you know yeah different insights right right but when we have that person i'm gonna say this that person that always triggered us into anger and we don't have that that fuel for that fire in us we grieve that almost. Yeah. So no, I want sure. people to understand that, that, you know, if you have um, a brother or sister that used to argue with, or a coworker yeah. or somebody and they're gone all of a sudden, it's like, wait a minute, I don't have that banter back yeah. and forth that, that fed a part of me Yeah. that maybe it was a sibling that I argued with that I can't argue with. And so but when something grieves, remember that's an ending opportunity, right? An ending opportunity, right? So when we are not able to go to that restaurant, when we're not able to communicate with that person anymore in the physical, yeah. I agree. My dad and I are, are, I get to talk with my dad more than I ever have before, you know, yeah. my mom's not so much. My mom, you know, she, um, and and my uncle not so much that they they don't spend much time with me but at the same time my dad and i but we were always like this in in human life so. yes mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're like the, he turned out to be one of my guides but you know i agree that they are here with us with love and that's the thing about essence of love yeah that you know maybe their soul isn't with us yeah but their essence of love can be with us. And I'm going to let you know that, that the people that we struggled with, that they were not who we wanted them to be. Right. And I actually just had a show on this with, with uh, one of my friends that about how our souls kind of connect, right. That, yeah. That, um, that we don't necessarily, they change up. Yeah. And so, when they start doing their life review, then they send, then we have that essence of what love that we didn't get in this human relationship. Yeah. Probably, you know, because many times we have people that in our lives that we had no love with. Right. right. We didn't have any love with. But when they go through that, that review, we might start feeling this little tickle of love and yeah. we're wondering where it comes from. And that's that grief process is realizing that things don't stay the same. Yeah. Things don't stay the same. No matter what they are, they will never stay the same. That is one thing that is constant is change. Change triggers grief. Yes. Mm -hmm. Change triggers grief. Yes. Anger, frustration, happiness, and it's the extremes sometimes. Right. You can be crying at one time and all of a sudden you're laughing hysterically in the next. Right. Exactly. And, and you don't know why. Yeah. But I would say do it anyways, if you can, if you're in a place that's safe, do those extremes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, honor oh, sure. your emotions that are popping out, you know, yeah. make sure you're in a safe place because many times when we're grieving, we don't have that filter on that's yes. very that that's a good filter mm -hmm. for discernment 
And so we may be blurty. We may be a little angry. We might be a little bit in, um, bitey. We're yes. in fear and flight in reaction yes. a lot of times. And that is, that is part of it. But if you can, remembering that that's why we're meant to have those nights where we cry. Yeah. We pull over in the car and let the tears come. Yeah. We, uh, we, um, we, you know, get angry, you know, pull over and get angry. Yeah. Pull over and have a that hysteric laugh that you wanting to have. Yeah. Because I, you know, there is a scientific um, study out there that, that says we cry with our tears that are sad. Yeah. And then if we cry with our tears that are happy, yeah. they're different chemistry, which oh, helps yeah. our body shift. Yes. And so if you are in extremes, laugh if you are called to laugh. Exactly. Nobody exactly. around you is going to punish you because you're laughing when you're in grief, except for someone who is in humanness and they are reacting to themselves. Right. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's why I say, if you're in a safe place, if you need to, and somebody like, if you're wanting to extremely laugh mm -hmm. in a funeral yeah. and nobody else is wanting to laugh, I, I would say go outside and laugh. Right. Exactly. Go to a safe place and laugh because many people laugh is their cry. Yeah. Right. Laugh it's is therapy. Their cry. Yeah. It is therapy. It is therapy. And I just hope that the show, you know, helps somebody somewhere. It will go through their, their sure. process because people don't realize that grief is a very 3d world. It's yeah. a very human experience and any soul that decides to come in Actually, that's part of the journey. If you look at everybody at some point in time, we're going to go through grief. Yes. That's why our soul is here is to learn those emotional experiences. And yeah. grief is the, is the, um, is the garage cleaner. It's the, it's the attic cleaner. It's the basement cleaner. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's and it's going to make you look at yourself if you're willing. Yeah. If you're willing. Now, how do you, you know, for, for people who, who want to overcome grief and they're having a very difficult time because change is not easy for a lot of people, because a lot of people fear change. A lot of people are scared of failure. And those are two things that draw people from not wanting to change. And they get into these, these negative behaviors, these habits, you know, of, of grieving and not, and not looking how to move forward. And they get stuck into that grieving what would be some tips and some techniques that you would tell someone even at home, what they could do to start beginning, you know, to overcome the grieving process and, and turn that grieving into something positive so they can move forward and really reach their full potential. I would say it's a journey. Mm -hmm. Realize that this is a journey. It's not a light switch. It's not a, it's not a moment of, aha, even though you'll have ahas in it and yeah. you'll have moments of light switches, but it's, it's a journey. It's a journey. And you're, you're going to say that, you know, you're going to have to understand there's one day forward, maybe two days backwards. Right. It's a moment. It's a moment. And like Very I said true. in the earlier, a little bit in this podcast that, that, you know, it is about doing things in spite of it. Yeah. And you know, some of us, you know, when we go through grief, I, you know, when, to give a label for grief, it was almost like, um, like I had mud metaphorically over my head yeah. and I couldn't see where to go or what to do, but I knew that I had to keep walking forward. Right. There was something, I didn't care if I was going in the wrong direction. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I had to start walking forward. And so what I would do and what I would invite people to do is get out of bed, like I said before. Yeah. Br and try to brush your hair. Right. Try to do that one thing that, that lifts you up, right? And then if you need to, go to the grocery store. Right. Walk around. Even if you don't know what to eat. Even if you, food doesn't sound good to you. Right. But find something. Pick up a banana. Peel it off and buy one banana, right? Right. Exactly. Do something that will help you get out into public. I had one um one uh person that I was talking to, and he he lost his dad from a heart attack. 
Yeah. Um, saw him one minute, got a phone call a half an hour later and his dad was dead. Had dinner with him. Half an hour later, his dad was dead. It took him a week to come back to work. They came back to work because they didn't know how else to do anything else. They had to do something in spite of it. Yeah. They couldn't stay at home and circle around in their mind, right? Yes. They yeah. had to go back to work. They weren't their perfectness. Mm -hmm. They were forgetting. They were doing that. They weren't doing what they needed to do. They were trying, they were trying hard to to um do things better than not but sometimes they would just sit there and go yeah i don't know what to do right but all of us supported them yeah you have them grace oh did you did you forget you know that the ladies room needed you know toilet paper mm -hmm. just a quick little reminder oh no it's no problem that's why you're not in the ladies room <laughs> you wouldn't know that the, the the bathroom wasn't needing toilet paper you know giving people grace yes right? but what they did was they came back to work but what they said it was kind of like being in a car sitting sitting not driving anywhere yeah and then having to all of a sudden get it on the freeway right <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden getting on the freeway you didn't yeah. even have time to get from zero to 60 you right. jumped from not moving to getting in a freeway. Yeah. Everybody went back to life. Everybody's doing things. That's why I suggest for people, if you can get up and start moving. Right. Start doing things in spite of it. Yeah. Um, when, um, when my, I would, um, when my mom passed away after my dad, three years before that, and I sat on the front porch and I said to my father-in-law, I don't know how to be a wife. Yeah. I don't know how to be a mom. I don't even know how to be me. Right. And he says, start doing it. Right. Start doing it. Right. And I can tell people start struggling with love. They mm -hmm. don't know what love is. Right. They question what love is. And I would suggest start loving a part of you. Yeah. I started loving my toes. Mm -hmm. Little toe. Hi, how are you? Thank you for balancing me. I know <laughs> people don't really talk about you very much, but I'm grateful you're there. Mm hmm. And I would start finding something that was distant. Right. And start finding love for it. Right. Even if it was just that moment. Right. Even if it was just a moment. Even if it was a fakey, I love you. Right. Practice makes better. Right. Yeah. Oh, for and sure. Start doing the journey. Start doing the journey. And then for some reason, when you look back. Mm-hmm. And you witness how far you've come. Yeah. The mud is up to your shoulders. Right. You don't realize it's happened. Yeah. And then you turn around and you realize that the mud is up to your waist. Mm hmm And then you notice that sooner or later you're walking on, you know, those dry river beds. Yep. Or lake mm -hmm. beds that crack. Yeah. You're walking on this mucky stuff, right? Right. But you look back and you go, oh, oh. Oh, and then pretty soon you're kind of back into life again. And I call that walkable grief. Yeah. We get into a walkable grief. We right. still get triggered. We still get moments. We still mm -hmm. need to pull over and cry. We still need to get angry. We need still need to laugh. We still need to do these things to process emotions because grief is always going to be a journey. Oh, Definitely. My parents, I just celebrated my 30th year of my father passing away. Right. And I was like, this October, I was like going, why am I so low? <gasps> oh, it's my dad's birthday. Yeah. It's my dad's birthday. And he would have been, what, 80 something. Wow. You know? Mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing about grief. And I'm going to go back to it. This can, this stage can happen and we don't know why we fall down that rabbit hole when our, when our uh, restaurant closes. Yeah. But it was the camel that broke the, it was the straw that cracked the, the cra camel's the back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was the last stick that kept us together. Right. In life. Yeah. And that's, and I'm going to tell people that grief has depression in it. Yes. Depressed depressed emotion uh-huh depressed 100%. emotion 
but we have to be careful. We don't get into depression of grief. Yes. Because I picture it like a wheel and depression is part of one of the spokes of the wheel. Right. But when we get down into it and we go into that, I'm going to call it sorrow. Mm-hmm. That, that deep broken. Yes. That brokenness. Right. And that's the grief of losing a child or losing a mate that you knew was your everything, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Or that thing that was your everything. Right. That brokenness. Yes. We have to be careful. And that's where you're going to need to get help. Please get help. Well, get yeah. help in anywhere of grief. I mean, it's not about walking this path alone. You shouldn't yeah. walk alone. I mean, that conversation I had with my father-in-law was one of my current cornerstones to turn a little bit, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. To do things in spite of it. Um, and there again, become a wife. Yeah. Become a mom. Become an... And that was where I started turning into being who I was meant to be. Yeah. I was turning to be who I meant. I wasn't going to be the same mom I was. Right. Well, I didn't really know how to be a mom because my dad passed away six weeks before my first child was born. So I never knew not having a, being a mom without grief. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But, but it, how do you do it? Right. And yeah, I can tell you that it it is a journey. Please give yourself a break and witness yourself, Mm -hmm. Witness yourself, be willing to look in the mirror and witness yourself and tell yourself it's okay where I'm at but I can't yes. stay here. Exactly. I honor me where I'm at, but I can't stay here. It's going to be unhealthy if I stay broken. Yes. But the only way you can become fuller again is by practicing living. Yes. By yes. practicing living and make sure, please, if you can, eat better if you can. Yes. And I tell you that if you can find somebody that gives you really good adrenal medicine, Mm -hmm. really good liver medicine, don't do anything extreme. Right. Don't go into cleanses. Don't your body has gone through this too. Your body has gone through this shock too. Also. Oh, for sure. So don't do anything extreme. Start building yourself up. Yeah. Building yourself up. I know that, that for me, when I went through as much grief as I've gone through, I mean, my cat died on the last day of my job. I mean, and she was my familiar, you know what I mean? So, I mean, it's like, I've gone through this like slap in the face, right? Yeah. (laughs) Reality of what grief is. And, uh, and so with that, that, that going through this, it's about that, um, that, you know, building those pieces up that, that, you know, your fear and flight, your reaction, and yeah. those are your adrenals, your thyroid, your pituitary gland. Do those things when you get into that walkable grief, especially yeah. easier time to do this. Start taking care of thy body mm-hmm. who has gone through this stress and these emotions and, and where we're going and what we're doing and, and believing in who we are. Yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah. Believing who we are, and and it's a journey. It is. It's, it's not a destination. No. There's no destination in grief. No. There's moments of hallelujah. I got here. Yeah. Like the end of a sentence, a period. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's an exclamation point. Hallelujah! I got here finally. <laughs> but go on to the next sentence because yeah. grief is the next sentence. It's right. The next chapter. It's the next book. Yeah right? Oh, for sure. So if I can give anything for people is honor where you're at, not enough of us honor where we're at at this moment and, and be there and yet give it a timeline and then move on. Honor your body, honor your mind, honor your emotions, honor your spirit. Right. We are here. Yeah. Then Move on to the next thing. Get up yeah. out of bed. Take a shower. Wash. Let the water wash your emotions through somewhere. You may cry like them. You know, water is a great um, avenue of of processing, right? Yeah. yeah. And then put on clothes that you haven't worn for a while. Right. 
fluff yourself up a little bit. Yeah. Dress yourself up a little bit. Even if it's a fake it till you make it. Right. It's a journey. It's a journey. I hope that makes sense. Oh, you know, it does. It, it's that it's that swimming through emotions. It's the yeah. swimming through emotions. And people are not taught about emotions like anxiety. Anxiety is a part of grief. Yeah. Anxiety is a part of grief. But yet grief is a teller. Oh, I'm or I mean anxiety is a teller. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going into something that's not going to be comfortable. Yeah. But I get but I need to be here in my body a little bit more. Oh, look at I get to do something new. Oh, look at I get to talk to somebody who who just doesn't feel like an alignment, but I'm going to learn something from it. Right. Exactly. Anxiety is about teller. It's a teller. Yeah. So, so be with whatever's in here, but don't always if you can practice your way out of sitting in it so deeply. Yes. And it's like sitting perfect. in the mud going, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. coming in that mud and I'm not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Well, at least sit up in the mud. Mm -hmm. There are many times when you just have to just push yourself because you, you're focusing, you know, they say, I think it's about 30 seconds is your emotions. And after that is the, is you mentally making it more what it is. Mm -hmm. So basically after those 30 seconds of feeling that anxiety, you have to really think about the benefit. Okay, if I move forward, if I get out of this grief, what's going to happen? And then you think of all those positive things and then you just got to push yourself. You got to just push yourself, you know, and, and, and no looking back, you know, the past is the past. You have to focus on now. And you just got to push yourself and think about all the wonderful things that could happen if you push yourself and then set those goals and move forward, you know, and just be connected with your mind, body, and soul. And like Teggy said, take care of yourself, eat the right foods, you know, reset your brain, retrain your brain, connect with your spirituality. Your intuition is always talking to you. Your body is always talking to you. Your mind is always talking to you. That's your spirit sending messages and you're, you're getting those messages. Listen. You know, there's many times where I think people have said, you know, something came into their head said, oh, don't do that. You know, and we go against our intuition and then something not good happens. Well, you know what? When your body is sending you those messages and the universe is sending you those messages, listen. Exactly. Anxiety is part of those messages. Um, yeah. And that's that's the thing that um, that when we go through those griefs, it's a life altering experience. Mm -hmm. depending on that life altering experience can change your DNA, right? It changes your mind's mind's makeup. Yeah. It changes cells in your body. Yeah. It changes moments right. of your digestion. Right. It, you know, it, it's that shock of the body. Right. And so that's why we, by respecting, and I understand that people always can't eat well when they're in the middle of it. But yeah. if you can start instead of grabbing for the candy bar, um, that candy bar type of thing, yeah, uh, you know, if you grab for the candy bar, then maybe eat half of it instead of the whole thing. Exactly. And then maybe try to go and in, in drink some water and do something, or be careful of the of the um, drinks that you're drinking. Yeah. Um, alcohol is part of that dance of of wanting to cover up those emotions. Right. I'm not saying alcohol is wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong, but I can tell you that alcohol really affects the liver and the liver and the gallbladder are about emotions. Yeah. And if you do these things um, unconsciously, it's amazing how we have to negotiate them going forward. Yeah. I know for me that after I went through as much grief as I went through, my body stopped producing hormones. Yeah. Yeah. And I have, I'm on the five-year journey of coming back and I can say, hallelujah, I have more energy than I've ever had before. Right. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Even before my grief, even before my fear and flight. Yeah. You know, and, and I can tell you that grief even was involved with my, my 32 years of marriage and my husband who drank since he was 12, 14 and now 11 years sober. Right. That's wonderful. You know, there's, there's those journeys of grief that I was why is he treating me this way yeah. why is he having to do this I can see this brilliant man is covering up his his self with alcohol 
and he doesn't know how to get it out. And so I'd grieve that. Yeah. I'd grieve my children who had to deal with an alcoholic husband, a dad, yeah. you know, grief is an interesting thing. And, and I'm so grateful for it in my own light, in my own yeah. truth. Right. I have been so grateful for my grief because it has enabled me. It's lifted me up and yeah. said, Natasha, this is who you're meant to be. And I'm saying, hallelujah. I, I miss my parents. I would want them back. There's a part of me now, though, that that am saying I'm grateful I'm not having to take care of 80 year old parents. Yeah. You know, but my kids went through their whole life without having grandparents living close to them. Right. And it would have changed who they were. Yeah. But, you know, that wasn't the journey. That yeah. wasn't the journey. But you can hear that grief in me with saying that, right? Right. You know, even 30 years and my kids are out, you know, it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be. And that's how you have to look at it. Yeah, exactly. And I love that my dad was here enough to guide my kids mm -hmm. and me during that process. Right. You know, so yeah. what are we going to do about it? Stand up. Exactly. Take a step. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Stand up and take a step, right? A hundred percent. Now yes. you do more than just counsel about um grief. You have a whole business and you do lots of different services. And tell people about your intuitive spiritual counseling and what it all involves. So people really know what you're about. Cause I want people to know that it's not all about grief. You do a lot of work in a lot of different areas and you help people with a lot of different things and you've been very successful at it. So tell people a little about what you do and where they could find you and those services. Well, being a multi-life intuitive, I am one that I really bring a lot of experiences. My soul has been around for many lifetimes. So I love to bring those understandings and those knowings that my soul loves to bring into my spiritual counseling. Yeah. But um, there's awarenesses that I have and people go, how do you know that? And I go, it's, it's there. Yeah. And being in it, that's one thing that another thing that, that people have told me that I've gone, people said I have gone to counseling, but there's something about the intuitive counseling that brings in a whole different layer and a whole different understanding of why I'm going through this. Right. And looking into past lives, looking into the DNA work. Yeah. Right. That many of times we're going through something that is part of our DNA from, let's say, great, great, great grandfather. Yeah. That was triggered. Right. Yes. And then we have past lives that go that we've been pulled through certain things and right. we're collectively going through something in this lifetime. Right. And I love to bring that experience up and an opportunity for healing. Right. And that's one thing that I have an understanding that it's up to the person I'm working with to do the healing work. Yeah. As well as it was up to me, but I love to bring opportunity, opportunity for that guidance. Yeah. So that's through seeing energy, working with emotions, working. I do house blessings and clearings. I, I do feng shui. So I'm all about energy and, and processing life, but doing that, I love to counsel people. Right. Through, um, through going through things. I love doing group mediumships and it's not that I love to support through people through, it's not like I'm, you know, it's that moment where I, my life soul calling is to be, I had a group mediumship where I had 10 women and seven of them lost children. Mm. And I did a mediumship for them. And they all were so in awe of, of that, the story of how these the souls came in and said, well, mom and other moms, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and so I love to bring guidance from this world into that, into other people. And I can do um, group mediumships or, or classes or, or anything through zoom or in person, I'm willing to travel. Mm -hmm. to do a group scenario. Uh, so it, I love to, I just love to be, I love to be, I love to be in front and be with 
those around me That's to support wonderful. them, whatever they're meant to work through. And I do this with no judgment. As my saying goes, if I haven't done it in this lifetime, I've done it in another. So why should I judge? Exactly. exactly. We all are human going through a human experience. How can I support you in that journey? Right. So you also do like workshops where you can go to different destinations and you could, you know, do classes and workshops mm -hmm. and teach. And exactly. Stuff like that. Oh, That's definitely. Wonderful. I am. So a lot of times when I do mediumships, the it's not always there's classes involved with it too. So yeah. there yeah. I mix things up. I read the room. Mm -hmm. I read the room. And it's amazing who comes to you when you need doing a class, right? Yeah. So I, I just, I'm in awe of this whole dance. I love to do, do this. And, and I know that sometimes I, sometimes talking to one, I'm like, how can I talk to more people? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How can I talk to more people to spread the word that yeah. we're, we're a miracle in the works? Exactly. We are a miracle in the works. I was listening to a scientist and he was saying, between our our DNA, the combination of our DNA between the two people that made us, yeah, plus the DNA of our soul coming in, yes, and that combination that we decided at this moment with this opportunity to be us, yes. Oh my gosh, I've always known we were a miracle. Mm -hmm. He put it in language. We are a miracle in the works, right? But it's the works. It's about us stepping up into it and walking with it. Right. Exactly. Our miracle. Exactly. Yes. I'm just so grateful for life. And I want to people, I want to help people be there too. Now, where can they find you? Where's your website? It's angelicclarifications.com. Okay. Angelicclarifications.com. I'm also uh, on YouTube, Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter. I'm well, not on Twitter hardly anymore. Um, uh, TikTok. I'm on all the platforms. Mm -hmm. I do a podcast every day with an angel. Mm -hmm. And every day with an angel, I do two minute shorts during the week. Uh, they are here to support you. And then I do my show Wednesdays at four o'clock Pacific time. I have every day with an angel and I have guests on or myself talking and I love to do my live show. I love live shows because they just, they bring inspiration and inspire, you know, inspire. What's that word? Sp inspiration. They inspire. inspire. No, in spontaneity. Uh, in spontaneity. Yeah. 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 In spontaneity. And, and it just brings in that, that grace that, that we are who we are. And so sometimes I'll have a comment that will, yeah. will bring in a different sense of that conversation, right? Yeah. So I love to do that. So you can catch me at Natasha Venter AC. That's all my social platforms, or you can reach me at angelicclarifications.com. And that's my website. That's awesome. That's awesome. I am so excited that you came on the show today. I'd love to have you back and we could talk about other topics because you bring so much energy to the room and your information, your experience, your, the way you see things is just invaluable. It's just, you. you know, it's just, it's, you know, you have so much to share and you, you know, your the way you do it is so special and so effective. And thank you I, yeah it is and i i really love having you that so i appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> so you know once again tell everybody before you go what your website is just so angelic clarifications.com yes so everybody you have to go visit her website natasha this has been a amazing experience and this is a topic that needs to be talked about more often because people go through it on a daily basis. And so many people suffer from grief and thank you so much for being on the show and sharing this. You're more than welcome. It. It's I'm just so grateful to help people be a better human, yeah. <laughs> a better human yes. blessings to everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm Natasha Venter at angelicclarifications.com. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you.